The new economy trait in set 8 is called Underground, which can grant you enormous rewards if played correctly. In this video, I'll be going over how this trait works and its full loot table, and how to play the trait from a win streak, loss streak, and mixed perspective. Then I'll show you the most effective way of forcing Underground every single game to get those giant cash outs. Underground is similar to Mercenary from set 6 and Fortune from set 4, because it's an economy trait and it doesn't directly give you any raw board strength. However, Underground plays differently from Mercenary and Fortune because this trait is not as reliant on streaking as the other two. If you have at least 3 Underground active, you start a heist. Every win against a player unlocks 2 locks at 3 Underground and 3 locks at 5 Underground. And every combat loss unlocks 3 locks at 3 Underground and 5 locks at 5. Every time you unlock 10 locks, you are presented with a heist reward that you can either accept or you can continue the heist for better rewards. Each time you continue your heist, the heist level gets upgraded to a maximum of level 7. Underground can be played with win streaking, loss streaking, or even if you're not streaking at all, because as we mentioned before, you'll unlock locks by just either winning or losing rounds. Here are the rewards for what you can get at each heist level in a single image so it's easier to remember. If you're playing underground and double up, the trait works the same way, but the amount of locks needed to unlock for a heist is 20 per level. But both you and your partner can unlock locks. Meaning if you're running 3 underground, if you win a round but your partner loses, you get 5 locks in total. As you unlock 2, while your partner unlocks 3. This works the same way if either of you are running 5 underground. And I haven't tested how it works if both people are running underground, but I assume it works the same way, meaning the total amount of locks are unlocked for both heists. Let's quickly look through the heist rewards. At heist 1, you can get gold, a reforger, remover, or component depending on what you've rolled. Both reforger and remover can be very impactful in the late game, so it's nice to see them at the first heist level. At heist level 2, you can get some great rewards for only unlocking 20 locks. You can start seeing more full items, more gold in general, and you can also get some ore items. All these rewards can be great considering how early you can get heist level 2 if you are fortunate enough to find underground 3 at the earlier parts of stage 2. Heist level 3 is where you can get your first big reward. Here you have a chance to get a radiant item, toma traits, a full item anvil, multiple orn items, or even 50 gold, which is basically the same as going from level 7 to 8 for free. These rewards can turn your game around in an instant if you hit the right cash out. Heist level 4 through 7 are where the best rewards await you. You can start getting Crown of Champions, Champion Duplicators, or an Item Anvils, multiple Tomo Traits and Raiding Items, and a ton of gold. How much better the next heist level is than the previous is something to keep in mind before choosing whether to go for the next heist or to take your reward. Opponent is worth about 8 gold. A full item is worth 12 gold. Now you might be wondering why isn't it 16 gold? Well the answer is components give you the flexibility to make what you want. Full items don't. So they're only worth 12 gold. Orn items are worth about 18 gold. And radiant items are worth about 30 gold. As you can see, we can calculate how valuable the next heist level is. Heist 1 is worth around 11 gold. Heist 2 gives you 16 gold on average since you get a Reforger plus 10 gold in Heist 1 and a Reforger plus 16 gold in Heist 2. Heist 3 is worth roughly 50 gold, meaning it gives around 23 more gold than Heist 2, assuming the Reforger is only worth 1 gold. Heist 4 is worth around 84 gold, meaning it gives around 34 gold than the next one. Heist 5 is worth around 120 gold, meaning it gives around 36 more gold than Heist 4. Heist 6 is worth around 150 gold, meaning it only gives around 30 more gold than Heist 5. And Heist 7 is worth around 200 gold, meaning it gives around 50 more gold than Heist 6. I graphed all of this, and as you can see, the growth is pretty linear until you move from 5 to 6 and 6 to 7. So consider if the extra gold you get from the next heist level is worth the damage you will take from being weaker. If you were to chase a level 7 heist, you can only lose a maximum of 14 HP per heist level, assuming you started at 100 HP when you got 3 underground in. Therefore, you can only lose around 1 round per heist, as you will take too much damage if you don't. Going any higher than a level 4 heist is not worth it, unless you have a ton of HP to work with, or if you're playing for fun, chasing that giant cash out. With a level 4 heist, you can lose a maximum of 24 HP per heist level, which means that you can lose around 2-3 to three rounds per heist depending on how good your losses are, and how early you started. This is doable if you're good at loss streaking, and the expected reward of 84 gold is level 9 for free or a guaranteed cat board at level 8. 
Now let's take a look at how you can play underground. The underground units are Kale, who's one cost, Ezreal and Vi, who are two costs, Sona, who's a three cost, and Samira, who is a four cost. This means that getting the trade active early is pretty easy to do because Kale, Ezreal, and Vi are all low cost units and all three can be found at level three. If you already have Kale, make sure to pre-level on 1-4 to have a higher chance to find the other two champions needed to unlock the trade, as you increase your chance for both 2 costs and 3 cost champions. If you find all three, you are in a very good position because you can start playing undergrounds on stage 2-1, and this is really strong because you can start unlocking locks as soon as player combat starts. And when you start playing it early, you also take less damage per loss, meaning you can take more losses per heist level, which is really powerful. If you don't find the trait by 2-3, then you should consider something else, because in this case, you are delaying your largest cash outs by a lot, but if you have a board that naturally fits in 3 underground, like this, then you can still play it and only look for a level 2 or 3 heist cash out. But note that the longer you wait, the lower level heist you should aim for. If you get underground heart or soul as your first augment, or if you get an underground emblem from Toma Traits, then you should always look to play 5 underground as soon as possible. Having plus 1 underground allows you to play 5 underground with only 1, 2, and 3 cost units. 5 underground allows you to get to the next heist level every 2 turns, as you unlock 5 locks per loss. This is incredibly powerful, as you can hit the level 4 or 5 heists very quickly, and then transition into a powerful level 8 or 9 comp with more HP to work with. Since you unlock locks by winning rounds as well, Win streaking with underground is a viable strategy because the underground units are surprisingly strong considering that it's an economy trait. Vi is a great tank, Ezreal can carry AP items, and Kale can carry AD items. You want to play another brawler to strengthen your frontline, and you usually want to finish off your level 5 board with either a duelist, which can look like this, or this, or if you have AP items, it wants to look like this. You pick either Kale or Ezreal as your carry based on your items, and based on which comp you want to end up with after you have cashed out with Underground. To win streak, you need 2 star units, and you need to make item. But if you want to learn more about how to make a strong early game board, then check out my early game guide where I go in depth on that subject. With the win streak strategy, it takes 5 wins to reach 10 locks, and get the option to cash out. So usually, you want to cut and run after the 2nd, 3rd, or 4th heist, depending on the rewards you are offered on your current board strength. After taking your first reward, you can decide to go for another heist which would usually be level 1, but this is almost never worth it, unless 3 underground naturally fits into your team. So in the vast majority of cases, you will drop the trait entirely and pivot into another comp after you've cashed out. You can pivot into any other comp depending on the items you've made. If you made AD items, the easiest pivot will be Samira Sure Shots, because that comp uses both Samira and Vi, which are units that will already be on your board if you are playing Underground. But you can also play around Zed, Aphelios, or Belveth. If you made AP items, then some AP carries you can pivot into are Talia, Zoe, Aesol, or MF. Loose streaking works a bit differently than win streaking. With this strategy, you want to preserve your HP as much as possible, while also losing rounds. You want to avoid leveling and focus on your economy as much as possible. Your board will look something like this on stage 2. On stage 3-2, you want to be level 6, and from here you have some options. You can roll level 6 to stop the bleeding of HP and to transition into a win streak, but all of this will slow down your heist progress in return. However, keep in mind the average HP you can lose per heist. If you lose too much HP, then you need to get stronger or you will have to cash out a level or two earlier. Another option is to continue loss streaking until you open your third heist reward at stage 3-7, which will be the wolf's turn. If you lost all your rounds until this point, cash out here, level up to 7 or 8 depending on your rewards, and pivot into any of the comps mentioned before. You can also play underground as if you weren't running the trait, since the highest progress doesn't get broken if you break your streak, like you did with Fortune and Mercenary from set 4 and 6. You can play normally, meaning you try to maintain whatever streak you're currently on, as long as it makes sense in terms of gold spent on maintaining the win streak, or in terms of the amount of HP you lose by loose streaking. This is the strategy I use the majority of the time when I'm running underground. The overall goal is to aim for the highest level cash out possible, which will be a level 4 cash out in most cases, but I will settle for a level 3 cash out if I'm losing a bit too much HP. The important thing is to plan ahead and think about when you will cash out, so that you know when you will transition into your final comp. 
Lastly, let's talk about how to force underground every single game. I wouldn't recommend it, but because of the fun factor, a lot of you guys will try to do that. So here's how to force it every single game. On the starting carousel, you always want to take Kale, no matter the item she is holding. You always want to pre-level to 4 on 1-4. The only exception is if you already hit 3 underground. As then, you'd rather stay as low level as possible and just focus on loss streaking and building up a strong economy. On stage 2-1, if you do not have 3 underground, you generally do not want to roll here, as you can still hit 3 underground a couple of turns later and still be fine, especially if you have a strong stage 2 board. On the stage 2 carousel, always grab an underground unit if there is one, regardless of the item you are holding. If you do not have 3 underground by 2-5, it's not worth chasing as you're already pretty far behind. If you would have lost 2-1, 2-2, and 2-3 with 3 underground active, you have almost completed an entire heist level at this point, meaning you are an entire heist level behind on stage 2-5 if you still don't have it active. At that point, just drop the trait and play something else, unless your strongest board includes playing some of the underground units. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you want cheat sheets for any of my comp guides, they're available for you to members and patrons, and links to those are down in the description. And if you want to get better at TFT, join the Discord. We got over 9,000 other players there who are hungry to climb. And if you want to get coached by me, the information is over on the Discord server as well. So take care and see you in the next video.